Juventus nil, Stuttgart won. Juventus suffered defeat for the first time under Thiago Motta. Where, where did it go wrong? Because I'll be honest, not much went right today. That is easily, that is hands down, Juventus' worst performance under Thiago Motta this season. I was watching a Juve team that I wasn't too familiar with. This is a Juve team under Thiago Motta. Total football, calm, composed, ball retention, recycle, left to right. Today, today Juve looked erratic. That is the best way to describe them. They looked erratic. They looked lethargic. At times, they didn't look like they were aware of what they were doing. They didn't look like they were familiar with the style of football that they've been playing the whole season. But before we get to everything, if you're new, make sure to subscribe. Make sure to hit the like. Make sure to let me know what you think in the comments. Where did it go wrong? Let's get into it. Now, it's only right to start off with the positives. The only positive from that Juventus performance is the keeper. And it's pairing. Because he is one person that understood the assignment. He understood what was required of him when he went out today, tonight. And it was to stop the opposition from scoring. And even when Stuttgart earned the penalty. And it's a 1v1 with the keeper from 12 yards. He stepped up to the plate. He delivered the goods. Because at times, at times, he kept that scoreline respectable. Stuttgart, like in particular in that first half, they were all over Juve and they were breaking down Juve and they were creating chances and against many other keepers, they go on to score two free goals but Perrin, Perrin was there time and time and time again and for me, even though he was on the losing end, even though he conceded right at the end, he is man of the match comfortably. Now let's get into the more tactical side of the game where did it go wrong where did it go wrong now there was one thing that really 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 stood out for me and it stood out because it's something i've praised juventus for this season it's something it's an aspect of the game that i've praised tiago motto when he was at bologna when he was at juventus and listen the proofs in the pudding you look at juventus when it comes to their pressing they are ranked one of the best in the italian division Juventus is structure off the ball, one of the best in Europe. You don't concede one goal in the Serie A by having a poor structure. The structure is one of the best in Europe. The press is one of the best in the Italian division. When you look at Juve and the way they apply pressure and the way they win the ball high up the field, all of that was non-existent today. That's, that's just me being honest with you guys. I felt like Juventus' press today wasn't good at all. And I'm trying to sit down and think, Who's to blame? What's to blame? Number one, it felt to me like these players were fatigued. And they're playing every three, four days. Number two, a lot of rotation can hinder a team. Like when you see McKenney, he doesn't really, he's not a natural number 10. He's never ever had to occupy that zone of the pitch. But today he was in that number 10 role. Conce Shao, he's been out of the picture. He comes back into the mix. Juventus is press, where the main issue was... I looked at Dusan Vlaovic because he is the spearhead of the press. Juventus like to set up off the ball in a 4-2-3-1. Vlaovic initiates the press. When Vlaovic goes, the three behind him have to push up. All three of them have to push up and close all the possible passing angles. When it comes to pressing, you either press as a team or you all sit back. Maintain shape. Where it was frustrating today is I was seeing Vlaovic go for the press. But I was looking at Kenan on the left, two, three seconds too late. McKenney in the centre, two, three seconds too late. Conceicao, two, three seconds too late. You look at some of these photos and this is how Stuttgart beat Juventus' press. So many times Juventus would engage and step up and try and press them. But the right-hand side was always open. Where is the player on the right-hand side? They're 10, 15 yards deeper. It became so easy for Stuttgart because they waited for Juve to press and then they played it down their left-hand side, which is Juventus' right-hand side because they always had a player unmarked open and that's how they beat the press and progressed the ball. Like even when you look at the goal that Denis Undorf scored, go back and watch it. They waited for Juve to press, get past it down the left, full back over the top into Denis Undorf. Where is the player on the right-hand side? And it was a common theme. And like I said, I don't know what to blame it on. Is it fatigue? Is it too much rotation? Is it players 
not being familiar because they're in and out of the picture, but Juventus' press wasn't good today. Finally, there's three players I want to discuss their performances because I feel like they were a big letdown today. Two out of the three I'm a massive fan of. Number one, Savona. I felt like today was a step too much. Stuttgart, Champions League, under the night, big pressure game, time to deliver the goods. He's had good games in the Serie A this season. But today, he just looked like a, a pressing target. Like, he looked like a player when Juve were trying to play out of the back. Press him and you will get the ball. And at times, he was just giving the ball. To Stuttgart, I really felt like he struggled. And the problem is, a lot of his passes were under hit. The weight of pass is so important in football because if you under hit your pass, you're now forcing your teammates to work extra hard to retrieve, to get onto that under hit pass. And now you're, you're forcing them to move out of position. They move out of position the whole structure, but so many times on the ball, five, ten yard passes, he was under hitting them. Fajoli. Fajoli is a player that I said must start. Fajoli is a player that, for me, came off the bench against Lazio and changed the whole game. But today, I don't know. Because he was another player today on the ball. It was it was lethargic. It was just too laid back. It was nonchalant. Like at times, he was giving the ball away under zero pressure. And the problem is, when you're asked and you're responsible to play in the core of the team. So in a central area where you're now responsible for the ball progression. For putting out the fires. You are the architect of this team in that central area. You have to be good at retaining possession. Fajoli lost the ball today like over 20 times. And it really didn't help a Juve team that was already being pressed intensely by Stuttgart when your midfielders are just giving the ball. And the third player, it pains me to say this, Kenan. Kenan, today, it was, it was disappointing. And like I said at the beginning of the video, it might be fatigue. It might be a lack of rotation. Like, Kenan plays week in, week out, 90 minute after 90 minute. But today, at times, I felt like he was trying to do it alone, where he would get onto the ball. He would hold onto it for too long. The passing, the decision making, the crossing in the final third. Like, Kenan looks like a player that needs a rest, but can he get that rest? Because he's so important to this Juve team. But having said all of that, Juve still sit in a very comfortable position. They've got two out of three wins in the Champions League. And this might just be a banana skin. But it's definitely something they could learn from. Now, if you're new, make sure to subscribe. Make sure to hit the like. Make sure to let me know what you think in the comments. I'll catch you guys on another one.